Cycle Counts in QuickBooks Enterprise is by far one of my favorite newest features of QuickBooks Enterprise 2019, 2020, and years uh, following that. Now, this only works in QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum subscription. In other words, if you're working with QuickBooks Pro, QuickBooks Premier, QuickBooks Accountant Edition, QuickBooks Online, or the basic version of QuickBooks Enterprise, this will not work. You have to be on the Platinum subscription. If you don't know which one you have, my contact information is in the comments. Contact my office and we'll help you sort that out. Real quick, if you wanted to know within your software, if you have that feature turned on, just click on the Edit menu and then go into Preferences. Then click on Inventory or Items and Inventory, Company Preferences, and notice if the Advanced Inventory Settings button is enabled. If that's grayed out or you don't see it, that means you don't have QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum 2019 or above. And the reason why it's important to point that out is because I really don't want to answer questions in the comments of people that say, oh, my software version doesn't have that. You have to be working on that top version. Anyway, let's talk about the context in terms of how this works. So if I go into reports, inventory, inventory stock status by item, this is simply a inventory count and value list, actually just inventory counts. You get, get to see every one of your inventory items and the quantity on hand. Having the wrong quantity on hand is a very typical thing in the QuickBooks world, mostly because people don't manage it correctly. So you want to be able to adjust your quantity on hand to the real value or the real quantity in order to have clean books moving forward. So how do we quickly adjust that um, inventory on hand? Well, if you're only doing one or two items, you can simply just go to inventory, adjust quantity value on hand. We will click on find and select items, pick maybe a, a couple of the items that you want to adjust, click add selected, change the new quantity, let's say to 450 on this one, and, and then let's say to eight on this one, okay? And then you just basically change the quantity, select the adjustment account, which is typically gonna be cost of goods sold or inventory adjustment something like that, and then you hit save and close, and that's a simple one-off inventory quantity adjustment. When you look at your new inventory stocks, stocks out of item, you're gonna see your quantities be updated. But what if we're dealing with a very large uh, item list, a lot of inventory, a lot of products, it will take you forever to do this manually. So one of the really cool features in QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum is called cycle counts. So the way you do that is you click on inventory, and then you click on cycle count. Then what you're gonna do is, you don't have to really pay attention to anything that's on this screen at the moment. What you're gonna do is you're gonna create a new cycle count and it's gonna basically keep a record of all the cycle counts you've done in the past. So I'm gonna click on create new cycle count on the top right. And then it's gonna tell me, okay, what's the date of this cycle count, right? And by default, it will use uh, today's date. That's pretty much how it does it. Then I'm gonna click on find and select items in this case, find and select items. And then I'm going to uh, select which items I want to include in the count. I can either click on select all to include them all, or I could just simply choose a couple of my choosing. For the time being, I'll just do all, and then I'll click on add selected items. Then it's gonna create basically a pre-setup of that cycle count. It's gonna give it a count ID. Notice it automatically names a count ID. This assign only pertains to when you're doing cycle counts from a handheld device. In this particular case, I'm gonna show you just the Excel portion of the cycle counts. I'll do a completely different video on the handheld device when I'm on the field and I can actually test it on the field. I'll do a different video on that. So we're gonna be dealing just with the Excel version at this point. I can add some notes if I want to, um, just notes about the cycle count just for my own reference. And then I'm gonna click where it says create and export to Excel. So once I click on create and export to Excel, it's basically going to open a brand new Excel file that basically gives me all my current inventory quantities and this is tricky, it's as of all dates. So everything that's in your inventory that you have in stock as of all dates will be included here, although the date created date will be based on the actual date that you create the cycle count. But this numerical value is not historical, it's 
all dates. Now, just real quick to make sure we understand what that means. If I go back into QuickBooks and go to reports, list, and then I click on item listing and quantity on hand is this fifth column, it would be the same numbers that are showing up here. The same sort of similar report, if I go to reports, inventory, and I click on physical inventory worksheet, and I click on that, that's gonna give me the, the counts, or if I go to list, item list, and I look at my total quantity on hand here, I scroll down to my inventory parts, that item count there. So it's basically the absolute item count, not the historical item count. So when you do cycle counts, make sure you sort of semi-stop operations for a second of inventory moving around so you can do this uh, correctly. So it's uh, the current inventory state as of all dates, including future transactions that might be affecting inventory. So don't worry about the, the date that is created. That doesn't really affect uh, historically the value of the inventory. In other words, if I go to reports, inventory, inventory stock status by item, and I take this date backwards, let's say I do uh, last fiscal year, my counts are gonna be different, okay? So I cannot choose retroactively as of when the counts are gonna be. They're based again in all uh, dates with the absolute inventory count in the system. Anyway, assuming that's okay, and there's some nuances around why it wouldn't, and if you need some private consulting on inventory, you, you, you can reach me by emailing me or my contact information on the description. It's just really important to keep that in mind. So anyway, I got back to my spreadsheet. Here's my accounts. And no matter how big this spreadsheet is, it's actually pretty cool. I will just come in here and do my accounts manually. So let's just make the assumption that I am going physically into the warehouse and counting each of these units, right? And then I just put there, uh, the new quantity, right? It doesn't have to vary. Like in some cases, I will have, I will be over in some. In some cases, I'm short in others. Uh, I'm basically just putting the new count, whatever the number happens to be. So after I'm done counting, I take the spreadsheet and I just save it. It's really all I have to do. I'm gonna save it here on the desktop somewhere and I'll click on save. And there's my cycle count template. I'm gonna close that. And then once I'm done with that spreadsheet, I come back into the screen and I'm gonna click on import from Excel. And I'm gonna select the spreadsheet that I was working on. Click okay or open. Okay, depending on how big the spreadsheet is, you're gonna see new counts here. So you're gonna see some new counts. Every time that the number is unchanged, it's just gonna say complete. That means you really don't have to do anything about it. And all the ones that have changing numbers or variants are gonna be into uh, this pending to review status, okay? So at this point, I could probably do status here and click on pending review. These are really only the ones I need to be updating. And then I can click on the select all button right on top of uh, count ID. And then at this point, I'm ready to accept the count into an adjustment. So I'm gonna click on batch actions and click on adjust quantity on hand. If I wanted to cancel this whole process, I could just click on mark as closed and nothing will happen. But this is the last step here, adjust quantity on hand. It will actually create an inventory adjustment for me. It will date it based on the system date, or in this case, this is a sample file. So sample file is always December 15th. And you pick the date that you wanna make this adjustment as of. I would normally recommend do it on the same date that you're doing your counts. You're gonna see all your uh, quantities being adjusted in this case. You pick the cost of goods sold account or expense account or whatever account you want to use to adjust it. And then you're going to click on save and close. Okay, that's going to create an inventory count adjustment. If I actually go into reports and I go to company financial and balance sheet standard and I go into my inventory asset account and I double click on that and I scroll all the way down, I should see my inventory adjustments. So these are the inventory adjustments that I just created. So I double click on that and I get to see my inventory adjustment and the numerical value that the inventory adjustment uh, represents. So that's actually a really important um, point here to know that your inventory adjustment is affecting your balance sheet and your profit and loss and all your financial information. So I'm gonna close that out and then I'm gonna click on dates and hit today. And then I'll click on refresh on my report. And now I should have the new numbers that were adjusted in my 
accounts. So that's it. It's just really quickly, really fast way of doing it. Export it to Excel, update it, import it back in within the QuickBooks Enterprise Advanced or Inventory QuickBooks Enterprise Platinum uh, system. There's always uh, there's also a way to send the cycle count to a mobile device, an Android device, and then with an Android device, actually uh, Android device actually scan the different boxes in your warehouse and then allow the the scanner and the phone to do those counts so you don't have to do it in Excel. And then you can click on send, bring it back into QuickBooks and process it the exact same way. So for this example, it was just the Excel export and import, but watch out for the next video that will show you the mobile device. Anyway, I hope you liked it. If you need to purchase QuickBooks Enterprise, we are resellers for it. We implement and train people on QuickBooks Enterprise. Go ahead and contact my office, email me. My email is below with any questions and have a wonderful day.